even the best laid space missions must yield to the forces of nature. The secretive X-37B space plane, part of the U.S. military's arsenal, was on the brink of its seventh orbital mission, set to soar atop a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. However, the launch has been rescheduled to Monday due to an impending stormy weather forecast. A stringent set of 14 weather conditions must align perfectly to grant the All Systems Go status before ignition and liftoff. Now targeting Monday, December 11th for Falcon Heavy's launch of the USS F-52 mission, with weather conditions forecasted to improve to 70% favorable for liftoff on Monday night, shared SpaceX on X. Also citing additional pre-launch checks to be conducted during, during the delay. The Space Force's 45th Weather Squadron anticipates a higher 70% chance of suitable launch conditions on Monday night a stark contrast to the meager 40% forecast for tonight. A vigorous cold front sweeping the space coast prompts these cautious measures, spawning showers, winds, and cumulus clouds. The forthcoming launch is poised as the seventh voyage for the durable X-37B space plane, marking its inaugural journey hitched to a Falcon Heavy. While five of its preceding six missions were launched using United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rockets and one with a SpaceX Falcon 9, the Falcon Heavy reigns supreme, with its triad of Falcon 9 boosters as the primary stage, granting unprecedented orbital payload capacity. A statement from the Space Force cryptically implies novel mission aims for the X-37B's OTV-7, teasing at the prospect of operating in new orbital regimes. Such aspirations, coupled with the launch vehicle's robust capabilities, suggest a trajectory that ventures farther and higher from Earth's bounds than customary. The decision to upgrade the launch vehicle may also revolve around payload mass. The X-37B boasts a spacious cargo bay to accommodate a suite of equipment and experiments, possibly necessitating the Falcon Heavy's enhanced lifting prowess. In the veiled world of X-37B missions, ambiguity is the norm. However, amidst the classified details lies a beacon of clarity. USS F-52 carries at least one disclosed experiment, NASA's SEEDS-2 project. This initiative aims to unravel the impacts of radiation and prolonged space sojourns on plant seeds, a pivotal step in understanding extraterrestrial farming and sustainability. Each successive X-37B mission has been longer than its predecessors, with its most recent orbital jaunt lasting 908 days. That mission, called OTV-6, landed in November of 2022. When Falcon Heavy launches today, it'll be the rocket's ninth mission to date. It'll also be the fifth flight for the side boosters supporting this particular mission. The duo most recently launched NASA's Psyche probe in October of this year. In short, the one-day delay of Falcon Heavy due to weather is still much better than having problems with the rocket's hardware itself. You've probably guessed what I mean. United Launch Alliance will not witness the anticipated debut of its next-generation Vulcan rocket in 2023 as initially scheduled. This means the Colorado-based launch company will end 2023 with just three launches. To consider, its rival SpaceX, meanwhile, has launched three rockets in three days during this calendar year. SpaceX is likely to end the year with 100 total launches. As for ULA, Three launches? That is the company's lowest total number of launches since its founding in 2006 when the rocket business of Lockheed Martin and Boeing were merged. The statement comes a couple of days after the rocket conducted a wet dress rehearsal where the vehicle was fully fueled and the countdown was to proceed to the final seconds before cutting off. But United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno said a couple of routine ground issues came up near the end of the test. Ground teams were targeting a T-0 of 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Based on observations of venting during the operation, it appeared the countdown reached its final four minutes before an abort occurred. The Vulcan vehicle left the launch pad and returned to the Vertical Integration Facility building at Launch Complex 41 on Saturday afternoon. I'd like a full WDR before our first flight, so Christmas Eve is likely out, Bruno said in his post on X. He added that they are working on schedules, but we know another test has been scheduled for as soon as Tuesday. 
Bruno said that the next launch window, based on Peregrine's needs, opens on January 8th of 2024 and would likely last for four days. Dan Hedrickson, Astrobotics Vice President of Business Development, said that the nominal time from launch to landing is between 30 to 39 days. It was not immediately clear if there is a different transit time for the early January launch window. With the launch potentially shifting to January, that changes the landscape for moonbound missions. Liftoff on January 8th would mean Peregrine would launch just four days before the opening of the launch window for Intuitive Machines' Nova C lander on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Several factors have contributed to the delay of the Vulcan's first flight. One of the primary reasons is the prolonged development of the BE-4 engines. The engines, which are a crucial component of the Vulcan's first stage have experienced technical challenges that have pushed back their delivery schedule. Additionally, the global supply chain disruptions and the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic have also played a role in that delay. The postponement is a setback for the ULA and its customers, including Astrobotic Technology, which had planned to use the Vulcan to deliver its Peregrine lunar lander to the moon as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. The delay may necessitate the use of alternative launch vehicles or adjustments to mission timelines. Despite the delay, ULA remains confident in the Vulcan's future success. The company has emphasized its commitment to ensuring that the Vulcan rocket meets all necessary safety and performance standards before its debut. The additional time will allow ULA to conduct thorough testing and validation of the rocket's systems. The delay of the Vulcan rocket's debut is a reminder of the complexities and challenges inherent in space launch vehicle development. As the aerospace industry continues to evolve with new technologies and players, the successful deployment of vehicles like the Vulcan will be critical to maintaining a competitive and innovative space launch market. Space is always hard, even when we reach it. Remember the gyro scare of the Hubble? Luckily, following a string of setbacks concerning one of its directional instruments, the Hubble Hubble Space Telescope will get back to its job of capturing deep space images soon enough. It all began on November 19th when one of the iconic observatory's three gyroscopes, a trio that lives on from an original set of six, began providing faulty readings. In general, gyroscopes are devices that use either circulating beams of light or rapidly spinning wheels to help scientists make sure an object is facing the direction they want it to face. Incorrect gyroscope readings on the Hubble Telescope telescope, as you might imagine, can therefore drastically affect scientific measurements. To image a specific spot in deep space with this Earth-orbiting telescope, you'd have to make sure it's actually facing that spot in deep space. Thus, Hubble entered safe mode on November 19th, something that's programmed to happen automatically when certain issues arise with the observatory. The team, however, was able to bring it back online the following day, but things weren't looking good shortly after, when and gyro issues sent Hubble into yet another safe mode situation on November 21st. The team brought Hubble back once more shortly after that, only for the beloved telescope to retreat into its dark corner once again on November 23rd. The most recent safe mode entrance was slightly worrying as it persisted for longer than the previous two dips. It wasn't too worrying though because, first of all, this isn't the first time Hubble's gyros have raised issues leading to a shutdown. And secondly, maybe most importantly, the observatory can actually function with only one gyroscope. The team just uses three because it maximizes efficiency. But perhaps all of this is moot at this point because as of December 7th, NASA confirmed that it plans on restoring Hubble for science operations once more, with all three gyros at that. Based on the performance observed during the tests, the team has decided to operate the gyros in a higher precision mode during science observations. Hubble's instruments and the observatory itself remain stable and in good health, NASA officials wrote in a statement. Though it's been over three decades since Hubble began exploring the vibrant reaches of our universe, and though a new observatory in town has been catching most of the spotlight recently, 
this Reynolds Wrap looking telescope is surely not finished yet. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up and happy holidays.